So a lot of people have been asking, what makes an engine a hit and miss engine? Well, I'll try to shoot a couple videos here to explain it. This is a 1917 associated two and a quarter horsepower hired man. And it's a hit and miss. Like, uh, like most all of the uh, hit and miss engines, it's a four stroke. Uh, most of them are. There's some that were two stroke, but this is a four stroke. And uh, basically, these were designed to run stationary pieces of equipment on the farm that uh, we now use electric motors for. Things like feed grinders and corn shellers and all that good stuff. But uh, they've got a governor on them, which is this right here. I've took the springs off. There's supposed to be springs that go between these holes right here. And uh, the governor basically sets the engine to run at a certain speed, uh, say 500 RPMs or so. So up until the engine reaches that speed, it behaves just like a regular four-stroke engine. You got intake compression, uh, power, and exhaust. You can see the little rocker arm right here that uh, moves the exhaust valve. Notice there is no rocker arm for the intake valve because the piston just sucks it open. Well, when the engine reaches that maximum speed, the speed that it's governed for, uh, say in this case 500 RPMs, these governor weights, the faster they go, they try to sling outwards towards the, the flywheel. And as they spin, you can see this little collar right here can move in and out. The faster the engine goes, the more that collar moves that way. And as it moves out that way, you've got this long rod right here, which is called the latch. Oh, I'm not getting in the way of the sunlight. And it moves in and out like that. And you see there's a little piece of steel right there that this will catch on. If I spin the engine over a little bit. I get to the right spot. Cut the battery off, that would help. All right. I push it just a little bit more. You can see that this bar and that are just about lined up. If the engine is going too fast, those weights will push that latch to where it hangs. And then, if you do that, it won't allow it to come back. It'll just be hung like that. And the engine will continue to, to turn without moving that rocker arm. You see the, the cam roller and the cam are no longer touching. But the next time it comes around, if the, if the engine has dropped below that speed, the cam will hit the roller and it will bump that to where they unlatch and it comes back. Now the rocker, the, the push rod, it, uh, it works the exhaust valve, but it also works the igniter, or in some cases the, a spark plug or a, a magneto. So the, the push rod not only uh, works the valves, but it also works the timing. If the push rod does not move back and forth, then the exhaust valve is held open so the engine doesn't fight its own compression, and there's no spark happening. So the engine will just coast with zero compression until it gets down to that minimum speed, in which case the push rod starts to move again and it uh, goes through another four-stroke cycle.